Producers. They've achieved massive cult success in this country. One of the most fanatical enthusiasts is Nigel Cox. He has one of the largest collections of Lambrettas and is based in Western Superman. This is the first model and A model, built in 1947. Uh, the B model, 48, the C model, 50, the D, E and F. Now, most people won't recognise these as Lambrettas um, because they only came into England in 51. But over here, we have an LD which people will recognise. This is a classic Lambretta. It's an LD 150, 1955-56. And as you can see, now we've got side panels on it, we've got leg shields, the engine's now enclosed, it's shaft driven and the many things on this one which you get, wouldn't get on a motorbike. For instance, you've got a spare wheel. Now this is the same as the front or the back. The colour is grey, which with most cars in those days were grey. The levers, the petrol cap are now in white ivory, which was again a classic colour. And this represents someone to them would be their car. I mean, in those days, cars were very expensive. Now, now from this, where do we go next? Well, after this, they went to the LI range. Here we have a Lambretta Series 2. And as you can see now, the headlight now moves with the steering. They're also four-speed gearbox and they're chain driven. In your mind, what's the absolute top one for you? Well, the ultimate scooter for me, and I think for many people, is an SX200. Well, now we've got a scooter that's brought right into the 60s now. It's a slim style model. Um, you haven't got the big fat mud guards. And you've got nice shaped panels and you've got a 200cc engine, which is what everybody wanted. You move from the LI range, which was just um, 45, 50 miles an hour, if you're lucky, to something that's 66, maybe 70. And along with that, you've got a disc brake, you've got shock absorbers. Uh, all this is to increase the road holding and the handling. So you have a scooter that's very modern. And we're looking at something that was made more than 30 years ago and it still looks good today. Probably like most people, I'm very familiar with the sort of the mod theme with scooters. Why do you think the mods use the scooter as, as part of their culture? What, what, what was the sort of elements of it? Being a mod was a way of life. You had a scooter, you had the clothing, you had the music. But particularly with Lambrettas and Vespas, you could put lots of accessories on. Um, every spare penny you got from working, you put mirrors on and crash bars and chrome. And unlike a motorbike, which many of them look the same, a scooter, you can make it very individual. And you wore a parka, and you wanted to see the groups of small faces and the who. And it was all part of your life at that time. So it was like a complete lifestyle then, really, wasn't it? To an extent, yes. I mean, you've got to think about you were only 16 and 17, and that was your first form of transport. Prior to that, you were catching a bus. Now, believe it or not, this is actually a scooter sidecar. I'm joined by Graham here. Graham, what on earth constitutes this to be a scooter? Well, it's, uh, it's powered by a scooter engine. So we're governed by the class in which the engine lies. And uh, we put a, a scooter engine in a motorcycle frame. So whilst we only have a small CC, we have a high power to weight ratio. And that's, uh, yes, we do uh, do phenomenal things with them, I can tell you. <laughs> you get it. Now, obviously, I'm actually in the, uh, I suppose, what you call the passenger side of aspect, and there's handles everywhere. Now, just talk me through exactly, if I was in it, what I would, you know, what, what your sort of passenger does then. OK. Um, the driver basically lies on the outfit like this. Yeah. And while I'm lay on the outfit, the passenger has total control of its uh, handling ability and so on. If I turn right, you've got yeah. to get from there behind me Back over very to the other quickly. Side, is it? Very quickly. And how do I grab on the other side then when I'm going from here? Well, when I'm laid down like that. Am I still on my knees? Or you put I... your hand over my back. Yeah. One hand down here. Yeah. And I'm and laid like that. Right over the back wheel then. And if you look down the track now yeah. and I look down the track, right yeah. handers, you can follow the right hander. Right. When we go left, I turn That's left. I pull around. And you've got to move straight out over there. Back on here. Yeah. And you've got to do that very quick. What on earth would possess anybody to do this, Graham? Madness. <laughs> Quite simply, <laughs> madness. This really is the, the, the extreme of, of, of scooters. I'm joined here by Paul, who's um, the mechanic on this bike. Paul, just run me through a couple of things here. What's, what's radically different besides all of it? Uh, basically, the, the frame, for example, is a, a Lambretta frame. It just had the, uh, the, the bodywork cut off it. Uh, the fuel is carried in the frame, so there's an electric pump. Moving on to the engine. A Lambretta TS1 barrel with the cooling fins removed for water cooling. Obviously, a lot of porting inside the barrel. And I've noticed the, uh, you've got a radiator up the front there. That's right, yeah. It's uh, 
try and uh, keep the motor cool, basically. Obviously, with the power outputs we're getting, we're producing somewhere in the region of three and a half times the original output of a, a Lambretta engine. So uh, we need to uh, keep the uh, temperature stable to maximise the power output. If you want to tease a little bit more torque out of your scooter, you've got to go and find yourself a top specialist. We found Terry down at Taft Speed, known to his friends as Terry. If this was my standard scooter, um, what sort of modifications could I do to, to increase the horsepower? Yeah. One of the easiest modifications is to use an aftermarket expansion chamber. This is one of ours, it's made up of cones, gives a considerable increase in power compared to you know, the standard exhaust system, which dates back to the 60s, hasn't changed since then. <laughs> um, bigger carburetor, different cylinder barrel, this is one of the aluminium barrels, Nicosil, reed valve, um, creates a good boost in power compared to the standard barrel. There's a lot of parts in the motor that can be modified or uprated, just depends how far you want to go. Now obviously once I've increased uh, the power in this, it has to handle a bit better and it obviously has to stop. What, what do I do on those sort of... Uh... Well this, this particular bike is a customer of ours, he's got a lot of... Uh, the usual parts fitted, um, an uprated shock absorber, adjustable damping, um, soft sticky tyres, uh, wider wheel rims, uprated front dampers, uh, a standard cable operated disc brake converted to a hydraulic operation, different brake pads in there, different rear brake shoes in there, a lot more stopping power than standard and the bikes are put together with a lot of care to get all the geometry and everything else right so that it handles nicely on the road. Well, the lads have done a fantastic job getting my trusty Steve back in one piece after my little skirmish at the hairpin. The lads are getting ready for the second race. I'm going to be on this one, and it's going to take my time. Norris told me to just keep it cool and enjoy myself, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. It. scooter racing I've been completely converted they're fast very maneuverable and most of all they're a lot of fun all I've got to do now is thank Norikur for making it happen <laughs>